It turns out football and financial management are unrelated skills. That's a problem because the NFL gives its pro players big piles of money, only to see them lose it all in some pretty dumb ways. In fact, almost 16% of NFL players file for bankruptcy within 12 years of retiring. So let's look at 18 NFL players who lost their money in the dumbest ways. Number 18, Ragib Ishmael. Our first unfortunate player is Ragib Rocket Ishmael. In 1991, this gifted wide receiver was expected to be a number one draft pick, but he shocked everyone and signed with the Canadian Football League instead of the NFL. He had a simple reason. The Toronto Argonauts offered to pay him over $18 million for a four-year contract. Ishmael played two years in Canada and then 10 years in the NFL, making about $20 million over his career. But the way he managed that fortune was questionable. Ishmael invested his money in a pretty wild array of business ventures. A lot of them didn't sound destined for success. In fact, they were fated to fail. Among the companies Ishmael invested in were a record label, and a store that sold framed calligraphy of famous people's names. He invested in a plastic surgery surgical tool and a vending machine that dispensed prepaid phone cards. Not terrible ideas, maybe, but they didn't pay off. His first big investment though, back in 1991, when he just signed with the Argonauts, was putting $300,000 into a restaurant called the Rock and Roll Cafe. Maybe he didn't know that the Hard Rock Cafe was already a thing. Maybe he thought his new place can do the rock music themed cafe thing better. Whatever he thought, he was wrong. The Rock and Roll Cafe failed and set the tone for Ishmael's career as an investor. He'd end up losing about $4 million on various ideas that didn't pan out. Ishmael was lucky enough to only be number 18 on this list. The $4 million he lost wasn't enough to bankrupt him. And compared to some of the stories we have coming up, losing $4 million is hardly anything. Number 17, Johnny Unitas. Our next player is one of the first and the greatest quarterback, Johnny Unitas. In an 18-year career, Unitas was a three-time MVP and 10-time Pro Bowler. But after he retired in 1973, Johnny Yu's golden arm didn't turn into a golden touch for business. His failed businesses included a restaurant, a bowling alley chain, and a real estate venture. That last one is going to be a bit of a theme in this video. But Unitas' biggest business blunder was a company that made circuit boards. In 1984, Unitas bought the company National Circuits for $3.5 million. Then he took a $5.3 million loan from the city of Baltimore in exchange for moving National Circuits production there. Not a bad deal, except a $5 million infusion couldn't save National Circuits from going under before it could move. Unitas and his wife had personally guaranteed the loan, leaving them on the hook for paying it back when the company couldn't make good on the deal. Unfortunately, Unitas had to declare bankruptcy a few years later. Our next player ended up getting caught in shady dealings. Number 16, Clinton Portis. In 2002, Clinton Portis was drafted as a running back for the Denver Broncos. Then, for seven impressive seasons, he played for the team now known as the Washington Commanders, but which, in my heart, will always be known as the Washington football team. Portis made $43 million over his football career, and maybe he saw some of the business failures that came before him because he did the smart thing and put his money in the care of two investment advisors who were registered with the NFL Players Association. Except the Players Association made a big mistake vouching for these guys. Their risky investment advice cost various NFL players over $40 million, and Clinton Portis was one of those ones who took a big hit. Portis lost at least $5 million to these guys. In one investment, he let them put $3 million of his money into a casino in Alabama. The casino turned out to be a losing bet. If that wasn't bad enough, Portis also developed some habits he couldn't afford. When he went bankrupt in 2015, he owed hundreds of thousands of dollars in child support and the casinos that he didn't own. He even owed half a million dollars to his mom. Unfortunately, he didn't get things sorted out after that. In 2022, Portis was sentenced to six months in prison for fraud. After he'd been caught scamming benefits for medical equipment he wasn't using. Number 15, Deuce McAllister. Unlike Clinton Portis, things looked solid for Deuce McAllister after a nine-year career with the New Orleans Saints. He was the second highest paid running back in 2005 when he signed a 50 $50 million contract extension. When he retired in 2008, he took his money and used it to open a Nissan dealership. 
but unfortunately, selling cars wouldn't work out for him. The dealership failed fast, and in 2009, he owed almost $2 million on the property. Nissan itself wanted $7 million back that it had lent him. Maybe it's ironic that if he hadn't been released from the Saints, his pay that year would have just covered that amount. More recently, McAllister's found work closer to football as a color commentator for Radio WWL. Our next player never went broke, but he managed to lose an eye-watering amount of money anyway. Number 14, John Elway. John Elway is remembered as one of the great quarterbacks, playing 16 years for the Denver Broncos. After leaving the field, he spent another decade working with the team until he rose to the position of general manager. That made Elway a rich target for scammers, and in 2010, he invested $15 million in what turned out to be a Ponzi scheme. The guy running the scheme eventually got sentenced to 40 years in prison for it, but a lot of his investors' money was just gone, including $7 million that John Elway had put in. Elway also gets on this list for money he didn't exactly lose, but he's probably kicked himself over a few times. Back in 1998, the Broncos owed Elway $21 million in back pay. The owner of the team offered him a deal. Instead of getting that money, Elway could pay $15 million and get a 20% stake in the Denver Broncos. It's no surprise that Elway decided he'd rather get paid than pay more money. But if he'd taken that deal, his shares in the Broncos would have been worth about $400 million today. Number 13, 2022 Mystery Player. Unlucky number 13 on our list is a bit of a mystery. We don't know who they are, but we know they're in trouble. In June 2023, Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk reported that according to an anonymous source inside the NFL, one unnamed player lost $8 million on sports betting in 2022. That's a terrifying amount of money to lose on gambling. I guess you'd think a professional athlete would know a thing or two about sports more than the average gambler, and this player must have thought so too, but it couldn't save him from an $8 million run of bad luck. NFL players aren't allowed to bet on NFL games for obvious reasons. The league suspended five players in April of 23 for breaking that rule, but the NFL does does let players gamble on other sports. Our mystery players gambling didn't break the NFL's rules, but it looks like he forgot the most important rule. The house always wins. Number 12, Luther Ellis. Speaking of houses, let's talk about someone who's had a few. Luther Ellis was a defensive lineman for 10 years on the Detroit Lions and then the Denver Broncos. He made over $11 million in just the last four years of his career, and he tried to be generous with it. One thing that's hard not to be impressed by is he adopted seven children on top of the five kids he already had. And with a family that size, it's easier to forgive his taste in big houses. But Ellis also invested in the kind of things that seemed hot in the early 2000s, like internet startups and real estate. And when those bubbles burst, he got wiped out. In 2011, Luther Ellis filed for bankruptcy with a little over a million dollars in assets and over four million in debts. Number 11, Dan Marino. Number 11 is another great who mostly got on the list because of one bad investment. Dan Marino made his name as a quarterback for the Miami Dolphins for 17 years, getting basically every prize except a Super Bowl ring. The Dolphins put up a statue of him outside their stadium, and they renamed a street after him. Of course, for some, he's probably more famous for his role in Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. After he retired, Marino invested $14.5 million in a movie special effects company called Digital Domains Media Group. You've probably seen their work. They did parts of Apollo 13, Titanic, X-Men, Transformers, and dozens of other movies. They also made the hologram of Tupac Shakur that performed at Coachella 2012. You'd think this would be a solid investment, but if you've heard the term Hollywood accounting, you probably know it's not a compliment. In 2011, a large chunk of digital domain got bought up by a hedge fund. The fund decided it could make fast money by running digital domain into the ground and short-selling the stock. By the end of 2012, Digital Domain Media Group was bankrupt, and Dan Marino's shares, which he paid almost $15 million for, were worth less than a million. It's hard to say if Dan Marino was the dumb one here, but running the business into the ground was a dumb way to make money and a dumb way to lose it. Number 10, Trevor Lawrence. Dan Marino is not the only one who should have watched out for financial shenanigans. In fact, in 2021, maybe we all should have been looking a little closer. Trevor Lawrence started his career just as cryptocurrency reached its peak and was trying to get mainstream attention through football. You might remember the ads the crypto exchange FTX ran during the Super Bowl in 2022. Lawrence joined the NFL as a number one one draft pick with a $22 million signing bonus, and he signed a deal with FTX to convert the bonus into cryptocurrency. Other players made similar deals, but this one seemed to be the biggest. Lawrence also worked as a paid spokesman for FTX, but that same year, the bottom fell out of the crypto market.
market. Trevor Lawrence's $22 million signing bonus shrank to less than half of that, and by the end of the year, FTX had gone bust. Billions of dollars that the company managed were just gone. In 2023, the people who ran FTX are on trial for securities fraud, and Trevor Lawrence is facing a class action lawsuit along with other celebs who endorsed the shady exchange. Number 9. Bernie Koser Prolific quarterback Bernie Koser's financial downfall is harder to pin on just one bad decision, but if I had to pick one, I'd say it was hiring his own father as a financial manager. By the time he retired in 1996, Koser had made around $20 million with the Browns, Cowboys, and Dolphins. Koser's dad slash financial manager used some of the money to pay for his own car in mortgage. You would think he could have just asked. That's probably where the bad luck started. Bernie Koser owned a steakhouse with the daring name of Bernie Koser's Steakhouse. It went broke in 2008. Koser lost three million in a divorce. In 2009, Koser had to file for bankruptcy. Like a lot of people who went bust that year, he was heavily invested in real estate. He lost about $9 million in various deals. All told, he owed close to $19 million, and he claimed to only have $44 left in the bank. But a few years later, he put his name on a new restaurant in Cleveland, and we can hope that one works out better for him. Number 8. Andre Risen Wide receiver Andre Risen bounced around seven teams over a 12-year career, making a total of $19 million. Along the way, he played in the Pro Bowl five times and won the Super Bowl with the Green Bay Packers. Unfortunately, it was flashy living that took him down. Risen had a taste for fancy cars, nightclubs, and women. He got sucked into the game of showing off how rich he was by spending as fast as he could. Risen said he spent a million dollars just on jewelry and much more on cars. One thing that probably didn't help was an incident while he was dating Lisa Lopes of the duo TLC. In 1994, the two were having a fight and Lopes lit Risen's shoes on fire in a bathtub. The fire got out of control, like things weren't out of control already, and it burned Ryzen's house down. What ultimately got him was child support, though. And in 2007, Ryzen filed for bankruptcy under the weight of his debts to various women. Number 7. Vince Young Vince Young is another football player who got caught up in the game of showing off how much money he could spend. Young was a quarterback for just six years, starting with the Tennessee Titans in 2006 and earning over $34 million in salary and another $30 million in endorsements. In 2008, he was on the cover of the latest Madden NFL game, which everyone knows is a bad omen. Making his uncle his financial advisor probably didn't set him up for success either. Young was spending money like nobody's business, buying cars for his friends and family, and picking up his entourage's tab at restaurants and clubs. He managed to spend $6,000 in one meal at a TGI Friday's and $15,000 in one trip to the Cheesecake Factory. He even bought every seat in a commercial airplane one time so he could have the trip to himself. By 2012, he had run through his money and was suing to get out from under a high-interest loan for almost $2 million. In 2014, Young filed for bankruptcy, saying he was $10 million in debt and had only a half a million dollars in assets. By this point, the Green Bay Packers had dropped Young, figuring his personal issues caused more problems than his talent solved. Young tried making a comeback in the Canadian Football League, but never saw play. He's taken jobs with the University of Texas since then, and it's been a rough time. They fired Young in 2017 and rehired him in 2021. Number 6. Mark Brunel Mark Brunell quarterbacked the Jacksonville Jaguars in four postseasons and took the New Orleans Saints to a Super Bowl win. He made $50 million over an impressive career, but he's on this list for the sheer velocity with which he managed to go broke. It wasn't by buying anything too extravagant. He put a lot of money in real estate. He didn't forget to buy a $9 million mansion for himself either. He also invested in a string of Whataburger franchises. Unfortunately, when the housing bubble burst, he lost $11 million in real estate and $9 million in the burger joints. Brunel filed for bankruptcy in 2010, a year before he retired. Now, when you hear what caused our next player's troubles, you'll be surprised we hadn't mentioned it before. Number 5. Lawrence Taylor Lawrence Taylor was a legendary defender for the New York Giants from 1981 to 1993. 
He was the highest paid defensive player of his time and earned around $50 million. Just before retiring, Taylor started a company called All Pro Products, but some outside investors used the company for a stock manipulation scheme and Taylor was left holding the bag when it went under. But Taylor's real problem was hard drugs, along with other bad habits. At his worst, he admitted to spending thousands of dollars a day on drugs and $1,000 a day on escorts. He was in and out of rehab and in and out of court. Though Taylor said he left that part of his life behind him, his run-ins with the law over drugs and other misconduct have continued until pretty recently. But like we've already seen, if you really want to lose money in the early 2000s, you need to get into real estate. Like our number four player, Dermonte Dawson. Dermonte Dawson was the highest paid lineman in Pittsburgh Steelers history, playing for 13 years. In 2000, he retired from football to be a real estate developer in his hometown of Lexington, Kentucky. Naturally, the 2007 mortgage crisis hit him like a 400-pound linebacker. In 2008, his investments were wiped out. He went bankrupt in 2010. He was $69 million in debt. Balanced against that, he had less than a million and a half dollars in assets, which included a slightly alarming $20,000 worth of guns. Since then, Dawson seems to have left real estate behind. He's now a sales rep for a promotional products company in San Diego. Number 3. Terrell Owens Terrell Owens is yet another player who lost tens of millions in the 2008 real estate crash. Though in his case, it wasn't so much that he was an investor, he just bought a lot of big houses. He played from 1996 to 2012 and made $80 million doing it. T.O. was a great wide receiver who was famously cocky and cavalier about money. He made a kind of game out of getting fined for excessive touchdown celebrations, racking up $150,000 in fines over his career. He did things like pose on the star of the Dallas Cowboys field, get fined for doing it, and then do it again. On Thanksgiving 2006, after scoring a touchdown against the Buccaneers, he carried the ball over to a Salvation Army display and dropped it in their oversized donation bucket. Later, Owen said, That was my donation. I hope it's worth as much as the fine. But all that is a drop in, well, the bucket compared to his other expenses. When housing values cratered in 2008, the mortgages he owed on his houses and condos came to $750,000 per month. He had the usual luxury expenses on top of that and child support payments to four different women. He never went bankrupt, but by 2012, he said the money had run out. He even went on an episode of Dr. Phil where three of his kids' mothers accused him of shorting them on their child support. Number two, Warren Sapp. Our number two player was also laid out by child support payments, among other things. Warren Sapp was an exceptional defensive tackle for 13 seasons on the Buccaneers and then the Raiders, earning $82 million. After he retired in 2008, he took a job as an analyst on the NFL Network, which earned him over $100,000 a month. In spite of all that, he couldn't make ends meet, and in 2012, he was filing for bankruptcy. He was almost $7 million in debt already when he retired. His luxury spending included a lion skin rug and an impressive collection of Air Jordans. His less extravagant spending included a project to build low-income housing in Fort Pierce, Florida. But at this point, would you even be surprised if I told you he got into that project just in time for the 2008 real estate crash? Sapp ended up owing the bank a million dollars on that failed project. At the time, he owed another million in back taxes and almost 900,000 in alimony and child support. Those alimony and child support payments were piling up at $75,000 a month, eating up the lion's share of his pay from the NFL Network. Less than five years after he retired in 2012, Sapp was declaring bankruptcy. He was $6.7 million in debt with just shy of that much in assets. He lost his 10,000 square foot house to pay for $3 million out of that debt. A few years later, in 2015, Sapp got charged with assault and the NFL dropped him from his analyst gig which is rough for him and rough for his ex-wife, who isn't likely to see the $3 million she says he still owes her. And number one, Michael Vick. Our number one NFL star made $160 million over his career as one of the most talented quarterbacks ever. 
and had one of the hardest falls from grace of any NFL player ever. I'm talking about Michael Vick. In 2001, Vick was the number one draft pick scooped up by the Atlanta Falcons for a six-year, $62 million contract. He got $35 million of that up front as a signing bonus. At the peak of his career in 2006, Sports Illustrated estimated Vic was making over $25 million a year between his salary and endorsements. But he wasn't managing that money very well. In fact, in 2005, his financial manager quit because Vic wouldn't follow his advice. Instead, Vic made the usual mistakes, overspending, giving too much away to his friends and family, and dodgy investments. But the investment that really wrecked Michael Vick's career and reputation was his involvement in an interstate dogfighting ring. In 2007, the feds caught up with him, and Vick pleaded guilty to financing the ring, helping manage the gambling operation, and personally abusing the dogs in a way we're not going to get into. Suffice it to say, people had a hard time cheering for him anymore but they wouldn't get the chance for a while because Vic also spent 21 months in jail for his crimes, which meant he wasn't earning money playing football. And obviously, no one wanted his endorsements anymore. Vic's creditors closed in on him. A pair of sports agents brought out a contract he'd signed with them just before the Falcons drafted him, saying he owed the agents 25% of his endorsement money for five years. The Falcons tried to take back Vic's massive signing bonus and ended up clawing back about $7 million from him. Michael Vick had to declare bankruptcy from prison. He even had to pay his bankruptcy lawyers two and a half million dollars. After he came out of prison, Vick came back to the NFL to work off his debts. He played five seasons with the Philadelphia Eagles, then wound down his career with stints on the Jets and then the Steelers. He's had a few jobs since retiring from the NFL in 2017, including a commentator on Fox Sports and a spokesman for the Humane Society. And that's the list. Those big paychecks the NFL gives out are hard to hold on to. Getting more money than you know what to do with can be dangerous because, well, you don't know what to do with it. For more stories of celebrities who funneled huge sums of money, including a few who blow the amounts in this video out of the water, check out our video on 16 rappers who went completely broke. Hey, millionaire. Football is a national pastime in America, so obviously, fans hold the game stars in high regard. But you often see the most famous people on earth squandering their fortunes. These NFL players had it all and lost it. Some of these stories will shock you. You won't believe how much money these famous players have lost, especially the person in our number one spot at the end of the video. Are you ready to learn which players lost their millions? Let's get into it. Number 12. Rahib Ishmael, $4 million. Rahib Rocket Ishmael is no stranger to controversy. As a junior at Notre Dame, he shocked the world when he chose to sign with the CFL's Toronto Argonauts. Although he had a good reason, they had offered him the biggest contract in football history to date, with a guaranteed $18.4 million for four years. But since then, he became known for having more failed business investments than any other athlete. His first terrible investment came when he was still a college junior. He handed over $300,000 for a new Hard Rock Cafe-type restaurant, unimaginatively named the Rock and Roll Cafe. His money and the restaurant disappeared in a puff of smoke. Some people would wise up after that, but Ishmael persisted and invested in incredible amounts of money into crazy business ventures. Among other things, he chose to put his money into a music label, a religious movie, some kind of plastic surgery tool, a machine that dispensed prepaid phone cards, and a custom calligraphy shop, which is so weird I can't even comment on it. Amazingly, he hasn't gone totally bankrupt, but his estimated losses add up to about $4 million. Number 11. Luther Ellis, $4 million. Luther Ellis had a super successful career as a star defensive lineman for the Detroit Lions, but his business career didn't really match up. He's another player who made terrible investments in things like internet companies and real estate ventures over the years, but he lost money in plenty of other creative ways too. Delinquent taxes and mortgage debt helped to drain some more of his money. He sure knew how to spend his money, and the mortgage debt was largely due to the size of the house he chose to buy. He's also the father of 12 children, so it won't surprise you to hear he owes thousands of dollars in school fees. But 
but in 2011, he finally filed for bankruptcy after a lender won a judgment against him, worth about half a million dollars. After that, he had $1.38 million in assets, which sounds good, except for the $4.4 million in liabilities. Since then, he's been coaching high school football and doing some public speaking about his rise and fall. He blames greed for his financial collapse, but hopefully, he learned a few life lessons from it. Number 10. Clinton Portis, $5 million with 80 touchdowns in his NFL career, it's not surprising that Clinton Porras managed to earn a $50 million contract with the Redskins. Unfortunately, his business decisions weren't anywhere near that successful, and you can argue that wasn't even his fault. He put his money into the hands of two investment advisors who were registered with the NFL Players Association. He had every reason to think they were legit, but sadly, they turned out to be pretty shady. They did have to suffer the consequences of the dealings, but not before losing a significant amount of Portis money. He lost $1.3 million on a casino in Alabama that went broke. He ended up owing incredible amounts of money to the IRS and MGM Grand Casino, the Borgata Casino, and even his own mother. She was entitled to half a million, in case you were wondering. Adding that to the 400000 he owed in child support to four different women, and you reach a loss of about $5 million. To make matters worse, he was also charged with committing wire fraud and healthcare fraud, along with some fellow ex-NFL stars. Still, I kind of feel sorry for him. Number 9. Johnny Unitas – $5.3 million Johnny Unitas has got to be one of the greatest sportsmen of all time, scoring 290 touchdowns in his dazzling career. Unfortunately, the better someone is at football, the worse they seem to be at business. He had a seriously long list of businesses that went under, including a restaurant, a bowling alley chain, a real estate venture in Florida, and a freight company. But the real clincher that secured his bankruptcy was an electronics company that produced circuit boards. He borrowed $5.3 million from the city of Baltimore with the promise that he would move the business to their city once he'd bought it. Unfortunately, he personally guaranteed the loan. So when the business inevitably went bankrupt, he and his wife were left with the bill. It doesn't look like they ever bounced back. Number 8. Deuce McAllister, $7 million Deuce McAllister was once the second highest paid running back. You'd imagine he'd have enough money to keep him going forever. But unfortunately, just four years after earning that title, he filed for bankruptcy. It all started with an investment in a Nissan car dealership. That definitely didn't go to plan. Nissan's financing arm claimed that McAllister owed them $7 million. That's exactly the same amount he would have earned that year if the New Orleans Saints hadn't released him a month before his trouble started. They sued him for over $1.5 million. McAllister responded, with a counterclaim, saying they deliberately withheld information from him about how profitable the area was. Unfortunately, nothing seemed to come of his claim. Instead, his house was auctioned off in a legal claim two years later. He apparently owed about $1.8 million on the mortgage. I guess there's not much you can do to pay off your house when Nissan bankrupted you. Number 7. Vince Young, $10 million You'd imagine the kind of money NFL players make could last a lifetime, but anyone who can spend $15,000 on a single trip to the Cheesecake Factory will run out of money eventually. By the way, Vince Young actually did do that. I'm not sure how. There shouldn't be $15,000 worth of food in any Cheesecake Factory, but Young seems to have a knack for spending money. That's apparently not his only five-figure dinner tab either. His other extravagant spending sprees include expensive cars for family members and friends, and there was one occasion where he bought every ticket on a plane to have it all to himself. Apparently, his financial advisor and uncle, who served as his manager, didn't do much to stop him. He filed for bankruptcy in 2014, with about a half a million to his name and 10 million in debts. The story has a happy ending, though. He since got a degree, got a good broadcasting job, and cleared his debt. Now that we've hit 10 million in losses, give us a like, subscribe for more of the best business stories out there, and keep watching. 10 million seems like a small loss next to our number one spot. Number 6. Dan Marino – $0.6 million Miami Dolphins quarterback Dan Marino had a pretty incredible NFL career. He played for 17 seasons and 9 Pro Bowls, scoring 420 touchdowns in his career. He's even known to people who don't care about football, since his legendary appearance in the comedy classic Ace Ventura – Pet Detective. But that was the last time his film career went well for him. In 2012, he was in the headlines again for a huge failure. At the time, he owed 1.6 million shares in Digital Domain Media Group. Even if you don't know their name, you've seen their work. The James Cameron-backed company was involved in the special effects for movies like Titanic and Apollo 13. 
They were also the people behind the famous Tupac hologram. The hologram actually worked in Mario's favor. It's up the price of their shares to $9.20. Sadly, they didn't last very long, and the stock soon plummeted so low that the company went bankrupt. Marino is estimated to have lost just under $14 million as a result. It all seems a bit unfair. I would have bet my money on that company too. Still, he managed to bounce back since then. He's now working in broadcasting with CBS and HBO, and he's back with the Dolphins, this time as a special advisor. Number 5. Bernie Kosar, $15 million The great quarterback Bernie Kosar was a goldmine for the Cleveland Browns over his admirable career. However, his investments didn't really match up. While we're not sure of his total net worth, we know he was one of the richest quarterbacks when he was playing, thanks to a $5 million contract with the Browns. Some estimates put his assets at around $10 million. That's a lot of money to lose. Kozar had no problem burning through it. Kozar found himself in serious financial trouble between a failed steakhouse business, bad real estate decisions, and an expensive divorce. He owed $9 million to a bank due to the real estate issues, nearly $1.5 million in debt to the Cleveland Browns, and $3 million was owed to his ex-wife. He had an additional $725,000 in unpaid personal loans, totaling a loss of about $15 million. I know what you're thinking, that's a pretty deep hole to dig yourself out of. He claims the problem was made worse by his own dad, who used to serve as his financial manager. Apparently, he used Kozar's money to pay off his car and mortgage. Rumor has it that he had just $44 in his bank account when he filed for bankruptcy in 2009. At least we can all say we're richer than this star NFL player. Number 4. Andre Risen, $19 million Andre Risen made an impressive amount of money from all teams he played for. Winning the Super Bowl with the Green Bay Packers has got to be the highlight of his career, but it can be pretty hard to come back down to earth when you've done something spectacular. That's probably where it all went wrong for him. There's a culture among rich ex-football players where they try to outdo each other with lavish expenses. As you can imagine, this doesn't help their bank balance, especially when they're mainly interested in sports cars. He also enjoyed visiting upmarket nightclubs with large groups of people and footing the entire bill. They say he sometimes arrives with tens of thousands of dollars ready to cover the cost of those nights out. An ESPN documentary revealed that Ryzen had even spent one million just on jewelry. His life might have gone a little smoother if he kept that million for his children. In the end, it was the mounting unpaid child support that led him to finally declaring bankruptcy. He lost about 19 million and he's now getting by as a high school football coach. That's a pretty big fall from grace. Think 19 million is a lot of money to lose? You haven't seen the numbers that are coming up. Guess which player lost the most in the comments? And keep watching to find out who our number one player is. Number three, Mark Brunel, $50 million. Mark Brunel had an amazing career as a quarterback with multiple teams, earning an estimated $50 million throughout his celebrated NFL days. But his financial story is one of the most fascinating on the list. $50 million is a lot of money, but the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And he fell pretty quick, losing all of his money within a year of retiring. It was largely failed real estate investments that sucked the millions out of his bank account. Aside from the 9.5 million mega mansion he bought for himself, there were even more investments that also collapsed along with the housing bubble. He also lost 9 million when his Whataburger franchise failed. And all this doesn't even cover the 24.8 million in debt. His 5 million in assets isn't going to save him from that, but it almost seems like he had a crystal ball because he got himself a job in medical sales with a $60,000 yearly salary before he'd even stop playing. It's like he saw it coming. He's doing a little better since 2021, though. He's been hired as a quarterback coach for the Detroit Lions, so that should be a ray of hope for him. Number 2. Dermonte Dawson, $70 million Dermonte Dawson was elected into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2012, so his football legacy is pretty solid for the rest of time. But his bank balance is a lot less stable. Despite being the highest paid offensive lineman in the history of the Pittsburgh Steelers, he had no problem losing all that cash. He invested millions into real estate, not even including his home in Kentucky. That meant the 2008 housing crash really hit him where it hurt. Despite assets like a Rolex watch and 22,000 in guns, he didn't come close to bouncing back on the millions he lost on his real estate investments. The 41-year-old motorhome might have come in handy if only he didn't owe money on that too. On top of all those problems, his son's college tuition was apparently costing him 3,500 every month. You're not going to believe this, but when he finally filed for bankruptcy in 2010, his debts were calculated at just under 70 million. I know, 
It hurts just hearing that number. And that's not even the biggest number on the list. That title actually goes to number one. Terrell Owens, $80 million. Another star who's been elected into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Terrell Owens is known for his talent and slightly cocky nature. You wouldn't think that would cost him, but it actually did. He made nearly $80 million in his NFL career, which is seriously impressive. But once again, real estate investments stepped in to make sure he couldn't enjoy it later in his life. At the time of the housing market crash, his mortgages on a collection of houses and condos totaled a staggering $750,000 every month. A $2 million entertainment complex in Alabama that went bust, and several impossibly expensive cars and lifestyle choices ate another huge hole into his bank balance. Plus, there were also the mounting child support payments that to the four different mothers of his children. Oh, and the risky investments made by his advisors. He also picked up several fines in his NFL career for excessive touchdown celebrations, like the time he posed on the star in the Dallas Cowboys stadium, and the time he did it again, which is seriously asking for trouble. The trouble came to him in the form of 150000 in fines. In the end, it looks like this all added up in a big way. He appears to have lost all the $80 million he earned as an NFL player. But he might still come back a little. He still owns an athleisure clothing brand and hosts a podcast called Get Your Popcorn Ready with T.O. and Hatch every week. He also just launched his own wine label. So even if he hasn't got any money, he has nice clothes and wine to keep him going. In the high-stakes world of the NFL, not every victory story ends with a flashy car and a parade. Inspired by a lyric from 50 Cent's Gold Digger, we're going to discuss the stories of NFL stars whose triumphs led to unexpected journeys, ending not in limousines, uh, but in Hyundais. Terrell Owens, a name synonymous with NFL greatness, experienced a career that was as tumultuous as it was brilliant. Known for his exceptional talent on the field, Owens also faced significant challenges off the field, particularly in his personal financial management. Owens' career in the NFL was nothing short of extraordinary. He was a six-time Pro Bowl selection and held numerous records, making him one of the most accomplished wide receivers in the league's history. His earnings over his 15-year career were substantial, with estimates suggesting he made about $80 million. However, despite this impressive income, Owens faced severe financial difficulties post-retirement, largely due to his child support obligations. The financial strain for Owens began with his child support payments. He fathered children with multiple partners, leading to significant monthly payments. These obligations, combined with a lifestyle that included lavish spending and poor investment decisions, led to a rapid depletion of his wealth. Legal battles over child support further compounded his financial woes, as he found himself entangled in a web of court cases and legal fees. The impact of these financial burdens on Owen's life was profound. He publicly admitted to facing financial ruin, with his earnings from the NFL quickly dissipating. The situation was a stark contrast to his days of fame and fortune in the NFL. It highlighted the precarious nature of financial stability, even for those who have earned millions. Owen's story tells us the importance of financial literacy and responsible money management, especially for athletes who experience sudden wealth. His post-NFL life, marked by financial struggles, underscores the need for athletes to plan for the future. Considering the short span of their professional careers and the potential for high expenses, such as child support. In the world of the NFL, where the glitz of Super Bowl rings often overshadows personal tribulations, the story of NFL player X stands as a stark reminder of the precarious nature of fame and fortune. This player, whose name is withheld for privacy, not only clinched a Super Bowl victory, but also faced a daunting challenge off the field that drastically altered his financial landscape. NFL player X's career was marked by remarkable athletic prowess, leading his team to a Super Bowl victory that etched his name in the annals of sports history. However, away from the roaring crowds and flashing lights, he was embroiled in a child support case that would significantly impact his financial stability. The child support battle was not just a legal skirmish, but a financial avalanche. The court's decision led to a substantial portion of his earnings being allocated for child support. This ruling, while ensuring the well-being of his child, had a profound effect on his personal finances. 
The case highlights the often overlooked aspect of professional athletes' lives, the management of their wealth amidst personal responsibilities and public scrutiny. This situation is emblematic of a broader issue faced by many in professional sports. The sudden influx of wealth, coupled with a lack of financial literacy, often leads athletes down a path of unsustainable spending and financial vulnerability. For NFL player X, the culmination of this journey was symbolically represented by his departure from the Super Bowl in a Hyundai, a far cry from the luxury vehicles often associated with NFL stars. This poignant moment serves as a metaphor for the dramatic shift in his financial status and lifestyle. In a world where athletic glory is often fleeting, the tale of NFL player X reminds us that financial wisdom is an invaluable asset, one that can safeguard against the unpredictable tides of fortune. Travis Henry's journey in the NFL is about a meteoric rise and a precipitous fall, marked not just by his on-field achievements, but also by his personal and financial struggles. Henry, a former NFL running back, experienced both the highs of professional sports success and the lows of financial and personal turmoil. Henry's NFL career, which spanned seven seasons, saw him play for the Buffalo Bills, Tennessee Titans, and Denver Broncos. His time in the league was marked by impressive performances, including a Pro Bowl selection in 2002. Financially, Henry earned millions during his career, but his earnings quickly became overshadowed by his personal life choices and their consequences. One of the most significant challenges Henry faced was managing child support for his numerous children. He fathered at least 11 children with 10 different women, leading to substantial child support obligations. These payments became a colossal financial burden, contributing to his eventual bankruptcy. The consequences of these obligations on Henry's life were severe. His financial woes were compounded by legal troubles, including drug-related charges, which further strained his resources. The combination of child support payments, legal issues, and a lifestyle that did not account for the eventual end of his NFL income led to a rapid decline in his financial stability. Henry's struggles with child support and financial management highlight the need for better financial education and planning among professional athletes. The contrast between his successful NFL career and his post-retirement challenges serves as a cautionary tale about the impermanence of sports fame and the critical need for foresight in financial and personal matters. Ray Lewis, a name synonymous with NFL greatness, carved an illustrious career that etched his name in the annals of football history. As a linebacker for the Baltimore Ravens, Lewis's career spanned 17 seasons, during which he amassed accolades including two Super Bowl titles and 13 Pro Bowl selections. His on-field prowess and leadership made him one of the most respected and feared players in the league. However, Lewis's journey was not without its challenges, particularly in his personal life, which had significant financial implications. One of the most notable aspects of his off-field life involved multiple child support cases. Lewis fathered six children with four different women, leading to various legal battles over child support. These child support cases had a profound effect on Lewis's financial status. Despite his substantial earnings from his NFL career and endorsements, the child support settlements represented a significant financial responsibility. The settlements were not only a financial burden, but also brought considerable media attention, impacting his public image. The media scrutiny of his personal life, particularly focusing on his relationships and child support issues, added a layer of complexity to his public persona. While revered for his athletic achievements and motivational leadership, these personal challenges painted a different picture, one that humanized the larger-than-life figure. Ray Lewis's story highlights the complexities that high-profile athletes face, especially regarding financial obligations and public perception. His ability to navigate these challenges, maintain a successful career, and eventually transition into a role as a respected sports analyst and motivational speaker demonstrates resilience and adaptability in the face of personal and financial adversity. As a cornerback, Antonio Cromartie made a name for himself with his exceptional athletic ability, playing for teams like the San Diego Chargers, New York Jets, and Arizona Cardinals. His on-field highlights include multiple Pro Bowl selections and a reputation as one of the league's top defensive players. However, Cromartie's life off the field garnered as much attention as his athletic feats. 
particularly regarding his family's situation and child support obligations. Cromarty fathered 14 children with eight different women, leading to substantial child support responsibilities. These obligations were not just a personal matter, but also had a significant impact on his financial situation. The child support payments Cromarty was responsible for were substantial, reportedly amounting to hundreds of thousands of dollars annually. Managing these payments, along with his lifestyle and career, presented a complex challenge. The financial strain was evident when, in 2010, despite a lucrative NFL career, Cromartie reportedly had difficulty recalling all his children's names in an HBO interview, highlighting the complexity of his personal life. Cromartie's situation is a stark reminder of the unique challenges faced by professional athletes, particularly those with extensive family obligations. The financial and personal pressures of managing such responsibilities, alongside the demands of a high-profile sports career, can be overwhelming. For Cromartie, this meant navigating a path filled with public scrutiny, financial management issues, and the need to balance his career with his role as a father for a large family. The impact of Cromartie's child support issues extended beyond his personal life, affecting his public image and potentially his career decisions. Stories about his family and financial obligations were widely covered in the media, often overshadowing his achievements on the field. This situation underscores the importance of financial planning and personal responsibility, especially for individuals in the public eye. Bart Scott, known for his dynamic presence on the field, carved out a successful career as a linebacker, primarily with the Baltimore Ravens and later with the New York Jets. His career highlights include a Pro Bowl selection in 2006 and being a key player in some of the most formidable defenses in the league. However, Scott's life off the field was marked by personal challenges, particularly following his divorce. The dissolution of his marriage led to significant financial obligations in the form of child support and alimony payments. These payments, a common consequence of divorce, especially for high-earning individuals like NFL players, had a substantial impact on Scott's financial stability. Navigating the complexities of these financial obligations while maintaining a high-profile career in the NFL was no small feat. The child support and alimony payments required careful financial management, a task that can be daunting for anyone, let alone someone in the public eye with the pressures of a professional sports career. The impact of these payments on Scott's financial situation was significant. Like many professional athletes, Scott faced the challenge of managing large sums of money at a relatively young age, and the added responsibilities of child support and alimony added another layer of complexity to this task. This situation highlights the importance of financial literacy and planning, particularly for athletes who experience sudden wealth. Moreover, Scott's situation sheds light on the broader issue of financial management among professional athletes. The combination of high earnings, public scrutiny, and personal responsibilities can create a unique set of challenges. For Scott, this meant balancing his role as a father and a former spouse with his professional obligations and financial health. In the male-dominated world of the NFL, the presence of a female executive or player is a significant stride towards breaking long-standing stereotypes. While there are numerous stories of male athletes facing financial challenges due to child support and alimony, the narrative changes when the gender roles are reversed. This segment focuses on a female figure in the sports industry who, in a rare but increasingly common scenario, found herself responsible for child support or alimony payments to a former husband. This female executive, whose identity remains confidential to respect privacy, climbed the ranks in the NFL, a testament to her expertise and resilience in a field traditionally reserved for men. Her journey was not just about shattering glass ceilings, it was also about navigating the complex world of personal relationships and their financial aftermath. After her marriage ended, she was required to make alimony payments to her former husband. This situation is less commonly discussed, but equally impactful. It challenges the traditional narrative of gender roles in financial responsibilities post-divorce. Her experience highlights the evolving dynamics of relationships and the financial implications that come with it irrespective of gender. The societal implications of a high-earning female executive paying alimony are significant. It brings to light the changing landscape of gender roles, especially in high-profile, high-earning positions. This shift is not just a financial issue, but also a cultural one, reflecting the evolving views on gender equality in responsibilities and rights. 
The personal impact on her was multifaceted. On one hand, it was a financial obligation that needed careful management, similar to her male counterparts. On the other, it was a scenario that challenged societal norms and personal expectations. Navigating this unique situation required not just financial acumen, but also a strong sense of self in the face of societal stereotypes. Chris Johnson etched his name in the annals of football history with a career that many aspiring athletes dream of. His journey from a promising college athlete to a star in the NFL is a tale of hard work, dedication, and immense talent. However, like many high-profile athletes, Johnson's life off the field, particularly his financial obligations, including child support, paints a complex picture of fame and its consequences. Johnson's NFL career was marked by significant achievements, including a record-breaking 2006 rushing yards in a single season, earning him the nickname CJ2K. His on-field success translated into lucrative contracts, making him one of the highest-paid running backs of his time. With fame and wealth, however, came responsibilities and challenges that extended beyond the gridiron. One of the most significant financial responsibilities Johnson faced was child support. Navigating the complexities of such obligations, especially as a public figure with substantial earnings, was a task that required careful management and foresight. The details of his child support cases, while private, underscore the financial implications that come with professional sports success. Life after the NFL for Johnson, like many retired athletes, involved adjusting to a world where the cheers of the stadium fade and the spotlight dims. Managing finances, including child support, becomes a critical aspect of this transition. For Johnson, this meant ensuring that his earnings during his NFL career were wisely managed to sustain his obligations and lifestyle in the years following his retirement. Adrian Peterson was marked by extraordinary talent and notable achievements, yet also intertwined with personal challenges and legal issues, particularly regarding child support. His story is a compelling example of how professional athletes navigate complex personal lives while in the public eye. Peterson's career in the NFL is nothing short of remarkable. Known for his explosive speed and power as a running back, he has set numerous records and earned accolades, including being a seven-time Pro Bowl selectee and the NFL Most Valuable Player in 2012. His achievements on the field made him one of the most recognizable figures in the sport, garnering admiration from fans and respect from peers. However, Peterson's off-field life has been as much in the spotlight as his on-field exploits, especially regarding his child support and legal issues. Like many athletes with high earnings, Peterson faced significant child support obligations. Navigating these complexities amidst his demanding career was a challenge that brought to light the complexities athletes face in their personal lives. The legal issues surrounding his child support cases have had a profound impact on Peterson's life, both financially and personally. Managing these obligations, coupled with the scrutiny of being a public figure, required a delicate balance. The financial strain of these commitments, along with other legal troubles, has shaped his life post-NFL, influencing his decisions and lifestyle. The story of this anonymous NFL player, whose name is withheld for privacy, is about the complex interplay between professional success, personal life, and financial responsibilities. His journey through the NFL and the significant challenges he faced with child support payments and legal battles offer a unique perspective on the lives of high-profile athletes. This player's career in the NFL was marked by impressive achievements. On the field, he demonstrated exceptional skill, determination, and athleticism, earning accolades and respect from both fans and peers. His journey from a rookie to a seasoned professional is a testament to his hard work and dedication to the sport. However, the fame and financial success that came with his NFL career also brought unique challenges. One of the most significant challenges he faced was in managing his personal life, particularly regarding child support payments. As a high-earning athlete, he was subject to substantial child support obligations. These obligations were not only a financial burden, but also led to a series of legal battles that played out in the public eye, adding stress and complexity to his life. The legal battles over child support payments had a profound impact on his life and finances. The constant scrutiny and pressure of maintaining his on-field performance while dealing with these issues off the field were immense. 
The financial implications of the legal disputes were significant, affecting his wealth and financial planning. Moreover, these challenges had a broader impact on his life, influencing his relationships, public image, and post-NFL career decisions. These stories of NFL stars, more than cautionary tales, remind us all of the vital importance of financial wisdom and personal responsibility. They underscore the human element in the glittering world of fame and fortune, offering profound lessons on navigating life's unexpected challenges with resilience and foresight.